we're in the, we're in the era of the citizen journalist. And that's a good thing because uh, no longer do we leave researching and uh, communication of information to quote the professionals. Because the professionals depend by definition on their income from the professional media organizations. And that gives the organization itself and that which owns it and that which uh, runs it massive control over journalists. Because uh, if, if you go beyond where we want you to go, then uh, there's a door over there and you're going to go through it very soon if you do that. So the citizen journalist phenomenon is uh, a, a fantastic uh, development. And, uh, you know, when I started out in uh, 1990 on this, uh, there were no uh, citizen journalists in the sense of the alternative media we have now. It's just one or two people um, researching the conspiracy, um, but they were like individuals. There was no real organization to it at all. There weren't many of us either. Um, and what has happened uh, since then is this massive alternative media has emerged based on, yes, citizen journalists, uh, people that um, just research information and communicate what they find. And some have uh, created kind of media operations to do that. And others um, are still doing it um, individually. Um, but what we shouldn't forget, I suggest anyway, is that whether it's citizen journalism or it's mainstream media journalism, it still should be journalism. And we have fallen, I think, here and there, perhaps more than that, into the idea that mainstream media bad, I'll give you that, I'll grant you. But alternative media, by definition, good. And I don't think it's like that at all. Because journalism is the pursuit of truth, the gathering of facts to support what you say is happening. And I see too often in the alternative media, people that don't do that. They, they come from a certain uh, direction, uh, which massively influences uh, what they say and what they won't say. And often these, these opinions, these views, which then become accepted by so many people as this is how it is, are not factually supported at all. And so um, I've been asked to do this, uh, this show for Iconic um, to go through a series of points. There's 11, actually, that I think um, from my experience now over 35 years of doing this um, are very important to know for those that are either new to this or quite new to this. And it might also operate as a bit of a reminder for those that have been on this, on this path for a, a longer period, that actually the basic foundations of journalism uh, never change. And we can get to a point where you become so used to giving your opinion and saying how things are that you forget that 
there has to be evidence to credibly back up what you're saying. Um, so I'm going to go through these 11 points, which all interconnect. And here is point number one. No preconceived belief that cannot be questioned. This is a biggie. And it's right that I should start with this because in so many ways from this, everything else comes. You know, we need some humility based on the acknowledgement that we don't know it all. <laughs> and actually, we don't know much. When you think of the, the totality of infinite reality, while we're in this, this human matrix web uh, of information, awareness, knowledge, suppression, how on earth can we know more than a fraction of what there is to know? Uh, but what I see in the alternative media, great swathes of it anyway, are preconceived beliefs that actually turn into no-go areas. Now, if you are genuinely seeking the truth of what's happening, of how things are, the one thing you must never, 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 never have is no-go areas. Because how, how do you know that those areas you won't go into don't have the very truth that you're looking for? So there's two particular areas within the alternative media. One is religion and the other is politics. Take uh, politics first. If you look, especially the way uh, the alternative media has gone since COVID, but it was true before, but even more so now, so much of what's called alternative is actually right-wing politics, particularly in America. It's Trump supporting people and uh, those that um, see that political view as the, the way forward and the people like Trump as the savior. Um, and therefore, anything that's not perceived as right-wing politics is by definition bad. That's a no-go area. The only, the only reason you'll go there to the so-called left or liberals, as they call them in America, not that they are, um, is to have a go at them. And so you have this, um, this way of looking at the world in which when people like me challenge the Trumps and challenge the Musks uh, and, 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 and point out that what they're saying and what they're doing don't match at all, then somehow we are... Um, a, a, a disunifying force within the movement. No, what we are is proper journalists asking proper questions to see if proper answers are forthcoming. And a lot of the time, I can tell you from experience, they're not. You know, when you take something like as red, like Trump good, right-wing politics good, you're already um, skewed and imbalanced in the way you see the world. F from a open-minded, um, any anything's possible point of view, then the whole spectrum of politics is... Um, not part of the answer, it's part of the problem. 
So the last thing you do is get caught in the, um, the spider's web of politics, of right, good, left, bad, or left, good, right, bad. Because once you do, once you start taking sides, you're not taking a panoramic view of everything, seeing what makes sense in all these different political aspects, seeing what doesn't, and coming to your own unique conclusion on what bits you're going to take and accept as valid and fair, and what you're going to not accept what you're going to challenge. And what I see um, with so much of the alternative media, citizen journalism, is that it's coming from a right-wing political uh, viewpoint. And therefore, it's completely skewed by right, good, left, bad. And... Um, that means there are certain areas you won't go into because what I'm going to come to in a second is religion. And my father had a phrase, he used to talk about bricks and mortar religion. And, and there is a, a, a version of religion that's bricks and mortar. It's, it's temples and mosques and synagogues and all that stuff. But if you look at the structure of religion, it can be applied right across human society. You know, we think Christianity, oh, that's a religion. Hinduism, religion. Islam, religion. Politics. Oh, no, that's politics. No, it's a freaking religion. And you look at um, so much of, of, of life, you look at mainstream science. It's a religion. What, what do we see with mainstream science? No-go areas everywhere. I've come across it so many times in my life where they have a certain orthodoxy. That's the religious orthodoxy. That's the political religious orthodoxy. And they won't go anywhere that is outside that orthodoxy. So uh, basically, mainstream science is a five-sense orthodoxy. Can I see it, touch it, taste it, all that stuff? Then it must exist then. And anything that's outside of that orthodoxy is paranormal. Ooh, blasphemer. So you see this, um, this blueprint of religion everywhere. And then you look at well, bricks and mortar religion. And so much of the alternative media, citizen journalism, is based on a Christian belief system, which is fair enough. You know, you believe what you like. But there are consequences. And then you've got others that, you know, are Islamic or whatever, Hindus. And what do all those things have in common? Right-wing politics, left-wing politics, uh, scientific orthodoxy, climate change. It's another bloody religion. And religion itself. What do they have in common? No-go areas. You see it all the time. So people like me who um, have no religion, have no um, no no-go areas, we kind of tend to upset loads of different people because we're kind of questioning all the orthodoxies. So people have said to me, you know, oh, I, I like what you're saying, you know, I like some of the things you say, but you don't believe in Jesus, and so I can't, I can't take you seriously, right? So, so not believing in Jesus, as the Christian version anyway, is a no-go area. They won't go there. If you, if you um, look at uh, what I call the mainstream of alternative journalism, the alternative media, 
any area of research that would question the Christian belief system, no go area, won't go there, not, not even gonna look. And it will be the same with Islam, it will be the same with Hinduism. A mainstream uh, um, scientist won't go there into what's called the paranormal. Oh no, I can't explain it, so therefore it can't be happening. And what it means is there's all these unexplored areas of life and uh, human society that not that they are denied, but what, that which they deny themselves. So I, uh, I see people in the alternative media saying, we, we must stand for freedom. We must uh, have freedom of speech and freedom of thought. But at the same time, they're denying themselves those very things. Because their freedom of thought is only up to the limit of their religious belief. And their freedom of speech is only up to the limit of their religious belief. And, you know, if you're searching for something and there's great areas that you won't go to search for it, if that something is in those areas, you're never going to find it. You're going to go round and round and round and round. You're never going to find this truth that you're looking for because you won't go where it is. So this first point is absolutely crucial. It's the foundation on which all the others stand. And that is no, no, no go areas. What guides us, what dictates where we go is information. It's evidence. And if it's challenging preconceived uh, beliefs or preconceived ideas, well, then it must. And if those um, preconceived ideas and beliefs do not stand up to that scrutiny, then what are we holding on to them for? And you know, my observation anyway, people with these rigid belief systems, one of the reasons they won't go into these areas I'm talking about that challenge the belief system is because they're frightened of what they might find. So point number one, open mind, open to all possibility is absolutely the bottom line. Without that, you're always going to be self-censoring yourself and you self-censor, you don't. Allow yourself to find, discover so many things that are just sitting there waiting for an open mind to find.